Chapter 1181 Trade Didn't I tell you to follow Ching Jun? Give Zhang Yuchen back to her or die. The handwriting looked as if it had been hastily scribbled. With no concern for what had been written, Hansen threw it away. He didn't care for the content of the paper, only who wrote it. It didn't seem as if Dry Bone or Baby Ghost were responsible. They had made it clear they weren't fond of Qin Jun and wanted to overthrow her. But even if it was them, how could they be associated with Blood Legion? For now, Hansen could only wait for the person behind the curtains to reveal themselves. Hansen thought Qin Jun would come after him, but after waiting a few days, nothing happened. After a few more days passed, Hansen noticed the presence of another slip of paper. Leave this shelter. You are in danger. Hansen crumpled it up and threw the paper away once again. He had worked hard to get where he was, so he wasn't quite willing to leave just yet. And still, he was extremely curious about who was leaving these messages for him. After all, who could have secretly delivered the slips of paper, time and time again, without him noticing? Perhaps it was a king spirit or super creature. It couldn't have been dry bone and baby ghost, as their behavior did not appear remotely concerning. They were the same as ever. And aside from those two, there were only seven other super creatures. Hansen went to investigate them. There was a nine-headed dragon, an armored beast, a hellbird, a rock king, a ghost eye, a water fairy, and a demon flower amongst them. The nine-headed dragon was a cruel and ruthless fiend. The armored beast kept to itself and was a private thing. The hellbird did not stay in the shelter often and spent most of its time away. The rock king worked hard, and when it was done, it went home to relax. If it was a super creature behind the letters, it had to be the ghost eye, water fairy, or demon flower. The ghost eye was restless and never stayed put. It frequently traveled around, sticking its nose in other people's business. It had even come over to see Hansen once, but due to Hansen not speaking its language, it didn't stay for long. The water fairy was a humanoid creature. It was in the shape of a voluptuous-looking woman, but one that was composed by running water. The water fairy was able to speak with Hansen, but she had never visited him at his home before. The demon flower was a walking plant that could speak in every language. Those three were the most suspicious of the super creature lot, but Hansen couldn't tell if they were acting odd or that was just how they were. Hansen had dug through three sky fruit in his time there, but was unable to receive any more Geno treasures. He was, however, given more life water. The life water he received now was of a much higher quality suited for beings of that rank. He had four drops, but he opted not to consume them. Hansen's Geno treasure was tiny. If Hansen used the life water he was now given, he wagered it wouldn't be able to save him. Hansen spent another three days in the tree hole and eventually decided to leave the place. Before he went, though, the water fairy stopped him. The water fairy's liquid composed but wobbled as she walked. Her body was an attractive sight that aroused Han Sr. She approached Hansen, smiled, and said, Hansen, would you like to make a deal? What kind of deal would that be? Hansen was confused by the sudden proposition. If you give me a drop of that life water, I'll have sex with you. A drop for a drip. Before Hansen could say anything, she swiftly stepped up to Hansen, grabbed his hands, and placed them on her gelatinous boobies. Hansen felt as if he was clutching jelly, and her boobs felt amazing to hold and squeeze. Feeling awkward about it, though, Hansen had to pull his hands back and say, but we aren't the same species. That's fine. I can be anything you want me to be. The water fairy's boobs and buttocks grew to an even bigger and more salacious size. Due to her being half transparent, she looked extremely attractive. Cough. Cough. Hansen coughed. You don't like this? The water fairy's body changed again, becoming the shape of a little girl in a swimsuit. She then squeezed and hugged Hansen's arm. Hansen, however, just stood there. So, she tried a number of different appearances to prompt a response. She became an aloof lady, a moody lady, and a sunny lady. Unsure of what would get Hansen to leap upon her with lecherous hands, she even gave herself bunny ears and the tail of a fox. Hansen was in disbelief the entire time. She was like an erotic shapeshifter. But no matter how attractive she tried to be, she was just a naked, half-transparent lady. Clearly, she and other non-humans of the sanctuary did not understand what truly attracted one human to another. If you want life water, how about you trade me a Geno treasure for it? Hansen offered, instead. The fairy was clearly disappointed, but she smiled and just said, 
I don't have Gino treasure, but I might have something you could be interested in. The water fairy brought something out. Hansen examined it. It was a small orb, not much bigger than a ping pong ball. It seemed to have been made from polished crystal. What is this? Did you create this? Hansen could sense her energy stemming from the water drop orb. Chapter 1182, Vice Leader Water Fairy smiled and said, This is my gear, and it is called a water drop orb. With this orb, you can prevent watery chaos. Can I swap this for all four of your life water drops? Define what watery chaos means first, Hansen said, not quite catching her drift. Water Fairy gave the orb to Hansen and then fired a water arrow at him. Ping! The water arrow broke into a liquidy splash, despite only being one foot away from Han Sr. Water Fairy smiled and said, The orb can block my attacks. It can only block water damage, mind you. And after some use, it'll take a while before it can be used again. But I used up one of my life water vials. Hansen wanted others to believe this. Deal. Water Fairy was happy to swap the water drop orb for Han Sin's remaining vials of life water. Hansen played with the water drop orb, although it only blocked water damage, and it wasn't the most useful item in the sanctuary. It was better than nothing. The life water was outright harmful, after all, so it was little more than a waste of space. The other super creatures soon learned about their trade too, and they all wanted to do the same. Unfortunately, Hansen had no more life water left. After a while, Hansen was able to obtain another two. Ghost Eye came to him shortly after, wanting to make an exchange. Ghost Eye threw him an eyeball that was black and white. It was reminiscent of Tai Chi in some ways. Hansen was not sure what it could do, but the eyeball was obviously gear that the creature had created. Much like the fairy, it wanted to swap the gear for Hansen's life water. I only have two life water drops. Do you still want to make the trade? Hansen asked while pulling his two vials out. Ghost Eye was actually an ape. One of its eyes was a murky shade of white, and it was an unsettling creature to look upon. But it was also the most active super creature amongst them. It swallowed the life water and left immediately. Hansen looked at the eyeball-like item he had been given. He noticed it was able to do something with Ian and Yang. If Hansen practiced Yang, he could use the item to make it Ian. If he practiced Ian, then he could make it Yang. Hansen had Ian Yang blast which meant the item wasn't very useful for him. For people who only practiced one, it would be a precious item to have though. If I work here for a long time, I should be able to amass quite the array of gear. Hansen thought the terms of these exchanges were more than fair, considering he had no need for the life water he'd be giving up. As a result, Hansen made plans to collect more life water for gear. But, a few days later, he stumbled across another message. It seemed as if the person who had been leaving the messages wanted to meet Hansen. At last. On the paper was an address and a time. Hansen made a mental note of it and then incinerated the parchment. The next day, Hansen left the tree. They were going to meet in a certain grove inside the walnut forest. Hansen arrived early, curious to meet the message-leaving enigma. After a while of waiting, Hansen heard someone approach. The person wasn't quite there yet and the forest was wreathed with vines that obscured the view quite a bit. Hansen would be unable to see who it was until they came closer. When the person's identity was finally revealed, Hansen was shocked. Despite all the possibilities he had mulled over in his mind, Hansen was utterly flabbergasted it was that person who had been leaving him the slips of paper. Didn't I tell you to leave? What are you still doing here? The man said coldly. You're the one leaving me slips of paper then, I assume. Hansen looked at the man with a strange expression. He had a big head and the body of a frail baby. It was Baby Ghost. Who else? Baby Ghost said. Then you know what this is? Hansen brought out a paper with the nine life cat symbol on it. Hansen believed he had been the one leaving the messages, but he did not believe Baby Ghost knew anything about the nine life cat or Blood Legion. I am a member of Blood Legion. You think I don't know what that is? Baby Ghost looked at Hansen with disdain. Hansen was shocked. Baby Ghost was a king spirit. How could he be a member of a human organization? Although Hansen had readied himself for this possibility, he was still taken aback to hear it out loud. You are a member? Hansen was almost unable to believe it. For a king spirit of the third god's sanctuary to be a member of Blood Legion was a nigh insane thing to comprehend. Hansen knew Blood Legion was strong but he did not expect the organization would be strong enough to employ king spirits of the third god's sanctuary. 
Hansen felt as if his world had been turned upside down, and all he knew about Blood Legion had been incorrect. What exactly was Blood Legion? Maybe Ghost pulled out something and tossed it over to Hans Sr. It was a card of the Alliance. Hansen had seen such things many times, as it was a card that usually had the nine life cat symbol on its underside. Hansen flipped it over, and as expected, there it was. It was a nine life cat card. I am the vice leader of Blood Legion. My title is Ghost Baby, Baby Ghost King said. Chapter 1183, Incorrect Judgment When Hansen heard what he was told, his immediate reaction was to frown. Surprises were nothing new to him at this point, but this one hit a little harder than most. You are the vice leader of Blood Legion? In that case, you know who the leader is? Hansen asked. You aren't a member, so I'm not obliged to tell you anything. But now that you're out of that shelter, I heartily recommend you don't return, Baby Ghost said. Hansen thought the person who gave him the paper must have noticed or sensed he was wearing the Nine Life Cat pendant and that the parchment used was in reference to it. That didn't seem to be the case, though. Baby Ghost did not seem to know about Hansen's connection with Blood Legion, and the paper Baby Ghost had been using to warn Hansen had only been intended to flaunt the organization he was a member of. If you don't think I'm a member, why would you help me? Hansen asked. Hansen had just met one of the most important figures of the enigmatic Blood Legion organization. Although he could not be 100% certain he was not being told a falsehood, he wanted to ask as many questions as he could and learn more. This was a wildly rare opportunity. Maybe Ghost merely stared at Hansen, saying, Your image, you remind me of someone. Who? Hansen was not expecting this response. Han Jingxi, Baby Ghost answered. The composure of Hansen's mind was given a shake but he still managed to calmly ask, How do you know him? Maybe Ghost's face suggested he had just taken a brief trip down memory lane. When he returned to the situation at hand, he just told Hansen, You don't need to know anything about all this. Just don't go back to a mortal shelter. At least tell me why. Give me one good reason why I should leave. I can't just walk away after everything. All because of your few measly words, Hansen proclaimed. Baby Ghost turned around and said, If you want to go back, go back. I won't stop you, but on your head be it, should things run afoul for you. Wait. Hansen brought out the nine life cat pendant that was tucked beneath his shirt and said, If you are the vice leader of Blood Legion, surely you know what this is, don't you? Baby Ghost turned back around, and the stiffness of his face dropped in shock. His eyes widened as they peered at the pendant. Baby Ghost suddenly moved. Hansen opened his jean locks, ready to fight. But what happened in the next second surprised even him. Baby Ghost had dropped onto the ground so quickly that a crater was formed. In that shallow pit, he bowed before Han Sr. Pang, pang, pang. Baby Ghost bowed repeatedly, with alarming speed and sincerity. All the while, his lips murmured and mumbled incoherent speech. Hansen froze in his place, having not expected a reaction such as this. This was a king spirit of the third god sanctuary. It had the potential to beat any human. But there it was, down on its hands and knees in respect to a small item belonging to a human organization. Is Blood Legion that big of a deal? The pendant he always carried with him suddenly felt much heavier. Baby Ghost then stood up. In a state of shock, he asked, Who are you? Why would you possess that relic? Seeing Baby Ghost's face, Hansen felt giving him the wrong answer now would swiftly lead to his death. Han Jingxi gave it to me, Hansen answered. Baby Ghost's face changed to one that was resolute. He barked, that's impossible. Han Jingji could not have possessed such a relic. But this did belong to him, Hansen reconfirmed. Baby Ghost then said, it belongs to Blood Legion. What are you suggesting? Hansen always thought Han Jingji might have been the leader of Blood Legion. There was definitely a strong association between the two, after all. But now, hearing Baby Ghost's reaction, that didn't seem likely. The fact that Baby Ghost was willing to state Han Jingji's name so freely also suggested he wasn't the leader or anyone of renown and importance within the ranks of Blood Legion. Han Jingji is a part of Blood Legion, isn't he? Why would it be impossible for him to have it? Hansen asked. Baby Ghost's expression had turned dark, as if the fancy for murder had taken over his mind. Angrily, he spat out his words, saying, You really are talking sh asterisk t. Han Jingji is not a member of Blood Legion, and there is no possible way for him to possess that relic. Be honest with me, boy, lest I pry the answers out of you with profound agony and suffering. Hansen was shocked, 
hearing Han Jingji was not even a lowly member of the organization. If Baby Ghost really was the vice leader, then it clearly meant he knew more about Blood Legion than Han Sen did. And that flipped all of Han Sen's theories thus far on their head. But why would Han Jingji ask Uncle Bug to join him in a search for the relic? Why would he know about its existence, given where it was found? Believe it or not, this was originally Han Jingji's. A lot of people can verify this claim, Han Sen said, standing his ground. Baby Ghost looked at Han Sen as if he was trying to skin his mind and discover the truth behind some lie he was being told. Han Sen then said, So tell me, how do you know about Han Jingji? Baby Ghost wished to say something more, but his face changed. Then, he turned to look through the dense brush of the walnut forest. Wait here, and do not follow me back to the shelter. I will be right back. Baby Ghost then took off back towards the sky tree. Hansen knew something big must have gone down in with the sky tree during their absence. Otherwise, Baby Ghost would not have run off in the middle of their conversation. Is the tree in the midst of reviving? Hansen also ran towards the sky tree. He had waited a long time for this opportunity, so he wasn't going to miss it. Everything seemed fine in the tree, though, as spirits and creatures were performing their labor duties like normal. Drybone King quickly ran over to see Hansen, though, and promptly brought him up to the higher floors. Mr. Immortal has finished his practice. He has summoned us to the Immortal Hall. Where have you been? Drybone King asked as he pulled on Hansen to move quicker. Hansen was shocked. If Immortal Emperor was becoming a reality, then that meant the tree was ready to spring back to life. Chapter 1184 You're all going to die here. Hansen removed the dragon blood ring from his finger. If Immortal Emperor truly was Sky King, he'd recognize Dragon King right away. Hansen and Dry Bone King arrived at the Immortal Hall. Hansen was eager to see what Immortal Emperor looked like. Ching Jun and Ghost Eye were there, as well. When Baby Ghost saw Hansen, a visible look of surprise came over his face. Hansen waved at him cheekily and then went to sit down. Hansen looked over towards the primary seat of the table, which was currently empty. Immortal Emperor had yet to arrive. No one spoke during the wait, not even the oh-so-talkative ghost eye. It just sat where it was, taking part in the eerie silence. Ching Jun was the one who sat nearest the primary seat, and she looked at Hansen as if she were looking at a dead man. Hansen didn't care very much what she may have been thinking, though. He just sat in his seat, waiting for a mortal emperor to arrive. Katcha. The latch of the back door was lifted. The sudden sound was loud, and it shocked those in their seats. Hansen turned to look in the direction of the noise. When his eyes fell upon a mortal emperor, he was surprised. He had often wondered what the enigmatic spirit would look like, and he had come up with numerous visions and images in his head. But this spirit subverted all his expectations. A mortal emperor looked like a peacock. The peacock was gold, with a number of multicolored ornamental eye spots decorating its plumage. It was stunning. I thought he was a spirit. Why is he a peacock? Hansen mulled the appearance as the peacock waddled its way over and took its rightful place in the primary seat. All the king spirits and super creatures in the hall bowed before it, so Hansen did the same. The peacock's eyes glanced over everyone in the hall but paused when they passed over Han Sr. When it was done, the peacock screeched, prompting everyone to look at it in wonder. It stretched its wings, and its eyes shot out a beam of golden light. Within that gold light, a thin shadow formed. Hansen could not make out the face of whatever or whoever it was, but its mere presence there rattled his nerves. Hansen saw the shadow's lips begin to move, and it looked to be speaking to Ching Jun. No one else was able to hear what was being spoken except for her, it seemed, for she nodded in answer. When the light came to an end, Ching Jun said, Yes, my emperor. The shadow nodded and faded as the light dimmed. Then, the peacock flapped its wings and flew out. After the peacock left, the king spirits and super creatures in the hall all felt great relief. It was as if they had been holding their breaths the whole time. Ching Jun, what did Mr. Immortal tell you? Water Fairy asked. Ching Jun quietly said, Mr. Immortal is going to open the holy door. He needs a lot of sky fruit to make pills, so he wants us to gather as much as we can over the next month. A month isn't very long. There are still 23 of them to go. Do we even have enough time? Dry Bone King said. We will have to form the paths, too. It is best that we hurry. Delaying Mr. Immortal would be most unwise, Ching Jun said. Dry Bone's face changed. Everyone works beneath my command. 
I will be most cruel and unpleasant to anyone who seeks to disturb Mr. Immortal's business, Ching Jun said. I don't want to delay anything, but I have to eat walnuts every three days. If I don't, I cannot participate in the work, Hansen said. Ching Jun said, Life water can keep you in your current state, child. There is no need for you to exit. I don't have any life water, Hansen then said, as cover for not wanting to consume it due to the possible consequences they could result in. Ching Jun expected Hansen to say this, though, so she gave everyone a bottle of the stuff. Then, she said, everyone is given ten drops of life water as a bonus. If we finish the job within the allotted month, we'll get twenty more as a reward. Everyone was delighted to hear this. They accepted the life water merrily, thanking the emperor for the gracious gift. Hansen accepted the bottle and listened to Ching Jun's work instructions. Ching Jun took them straight over to the sky fruit. The spirits and creatures were supposed to create the paths that led to them, but now they had to chip in and make their own due to the rush. Ching Jun put everyone in charge of two sky fruit. If things go according to plan, the tree will indeed see a revival in the next month, Dragon King said. Hansen had re-equipped the ring and was consulting with him. Is there any way we might be able to muck up his plans? Hansen said. Dragon King said, I don't think so. The spirits and super creatures have all consumed too much life water. They are beyond saving, and the sky tree is sure to absorb them all. Unless you can cut down the sky tree, it is hopeless. Not even Sky King himself could make a comeback after that. Hansen frowned. He had yet to save Chiu Ping, and he had just learned about Baby Ghost being a vice leader of Blood Legion. It would be a proper shame if the latter died. Just as Hansen was thinking about Baby Ghost, Baby Ghost was actually approaching him. Didn't I tell you not to return? Baby Ghost looked ugly. Uglier than usual. Give it a rest, will you? You're like a broken record. I'm fine where I am, okay? Hansen said. If it wasn't for that relic you showed me, I wouldn't care about you one bit. Baby Ghost paused for a moment, before going on to say, but for you to come back at this time, it is as good as suicide. Why? Hansen asked. Baby Ghost then said, honestly? Aside from Ching Jun and me, you're all going to die here. Chapter 1185 The Sky Tree is Revived Why? Hansen was surprised by this, and it seemed as if Baby Ghost knew a thing or two about what was going on. Baby Ghost said, You don't need to know the specifics. You are going to die, so give me the relic and speak your last words. Ah, is this about a mortal emperor sacrificing the whole tree? That's old news, Hansen said. Baby Ghost looked as if he'd swallowed a bug, and in utter shock, he gasped. How do you know about that? Hansen smiled and looked coy. He didn't answer him, and instead said, You don't need to know the specifics, but tell me, what makes you think you and Ching Jun will be spared? Maybe Ghost was still in shock over the fact Hansen knew what was going on, and he answered, Ching Jun is a mortal emperor's daughter. And me? I'm the one who concocted this scheme. Hmm, I see. So, have you been avoiding the consumption of life water? Hansen asked. What does the life water have to do with anything? Maybe Ghost asked, but right after, his mind seemed to get snagged on a sudden, disturbing thought. Whoever has been drinking the life water will be sacrificed. There's no particular discrimination, as it's a catch-all type of thing. Hansen was extra smug, rubbing it in. He could tell Baby Ghost had been drinking the life water. Baby Ghost's facial expression was beyond distraught, and so he said, impossible. Ching Jun has been using life water as well. Who has been feeding you these lies? Well, let me ask you. Have you been told how these sacrifices are to be, well, sacrificed? Hansen asked. Baby Ghost looked clueless. He wished to speak, but he seemed to be struggling to force out words. His face turned green at the sudden turn of events, and all his throat could end up spitting out were the words, H have I been TR tricked. After that baby ghost turned to run, but Hansen stopped him. If you're going to consult the emperor with this, you're a dead baby. Tell me about the relationship between Han Jingji and Blood Legion, Hansen told him. Baby ghost said, I don't fully believe your forked tongue. Not yet, leastways. I must go and confirm something. No, you tell me what I want to know now. Hansen didn't think Baby Ghost would ever come back. Once he left, Baby Ghost then answered, Gah, but it's a long story. The short version is, something huge happened within the Legion. We needed help. Han Jingji was then kidnapped by Blood Legion forces. Hansen was shocked. 
The revelations were coming thick and fast. There was a connection between Han Jingxi and Blood Legion, but the way it came about was very unexpected. Han Jingxi had actually been the victim of kidnapping. Hansen wished to ask more, but Baby Ghost was already gone. Han Jingxi was kidnapped by Blood Legion forces? That must mean he was there with them for some time, in some way or another. That might also mean he learned much about the organization, including the Nine Life Cat. But why was he kidnapped? Why did they need to do that? Did they kidnap just anyone? Did it happen before or after he visited that realm with the maybe a god, maybe a demon being? Hansen's mind was now racked with countless more questions. Hansen hoped Baby Ghost wouldn't be killed, so he could ask the spirit a bunch more questions. Hansen was not too worried what he might do, though. If Hansen was attacked and had to make an escape, he believed he could do so with the aid of Little Angel. A few days later, Ching Jun came looking for Han Sr. Hansen was surprised to see her, and when she approached, she asked, You didn't drink the life water you were given? Nope, Hansen answered simply. Good. Ching Jun handed something to Hansen, turned around, and left as swiftly as she appeared. Hansen wasn't sure why she had just done what she did, and truthfully, he fancied asking her a few questions. It seemed like Baby Ghost had told Ching Jun what Hansen had told him. She had given Hansen a small bottle with a piece of paper attached. The paper said the contract on Chiu Ping had been forfeit. Hansen had long wondered how he might get Ching Jun to let Chiu Ping go free. And now, it had been done without any effort on his part. Hansen was delighted, so he left the work site. He wanted to visit Chiu Ping and guide him out. Hansen thought someone might stop him, but no one did. He scanned the nearby area and then realized the king spirits and super creatures were all gone. Hansen returned to the fourth floor without issue and escorted Chiu Ping out of the tree. When Hansen returned to the underground shelter with him, he noticed all the walnut trees in the forest were dying. Maybe Ghost must have done something to make the Sky Tree revive even sooner. Dragon King exclaimed. Hansen frowned and flew back towards the Sky Tree. As he was returning, he saw countless creatures writhing on the forest floor in agony. You could see their life forces being pulled from their bodies, heading for the tree that contained a mortal shelter. Green sprouts began to grow from their corpses, becoming vines that absorbed their flesh. Seeing all the creatures become fertilizer, Hansen could not help but think. Dragon King was right. Creatures that have consumed walnuts or life water are being absorbed no matter where they are. Before Hansen arrived back, though, a scary presence startled him on the approach. A black and red tree was growing incredibly quickly, heading high up into the clouds. There was this a menacing spire in the land now, surrounded by countless dried-up trees and creature corpses. Even the ground and earth were being sucked dry of life, transforming the area into an apocalyptic hellscape. Chapter 1186, Cruel Bottle Hansen flew towards the sky tree as fast as he could. He knew he couldn't stop what was happening, but he hoped he could pick up a few goodies at the very least. Perhaps he'd even be able to kill a few of the super creatures and take their life geno essences from Sky King. The sky tree was growing at an alarming rate. The red and black bark was cracking and beginning to peel. Countless creatures tried to scramble out of the cracks that webbed the tree. As the tree grew and grew, the creatures started to return to their original size. There were tigers, titans, and birds, every creature imaginable, all trying to make an escape. But when they made it out, their bodies began to tear apart. Vines shot out from beneath their skin, ravaging their flesh and tangling them up. This happened to those that were airborne as well, and they rained down to the ground in pieces. The roots of the tree then began to lift themselves up and escape the ground that kept them in place. Like hungry tentacles, the roots grabbed the corpses of fallen creatures and drained them of their life force. The cracks across the tree began to heal, crushing creatures that sought to escape from them. The tree was slowly being drenched in blood, making for a terrible sight. A lot of creatures were unable to exit in time. For those that weren't crushed by the devilish lumber, they were instead ripped apart by the phantom vines that had been slumbering inside their bodies. The place was like a forested depiction of hell. And just as Hansen thought it would be best if he left, a light appeared. The light was Ching Jun. Her life force was draining as green sprouts began to pop up over her body. Get the cruel bottle. Ching Jun was not doing well, evidently. As she approached Hansen, she did so with wobbling movements. She was in great pain and suffering, that much was clear. Why? What is it? Hansen asked, 
but he did not delay in retrieving the jade bottle she had recently given him. Qin Jun gritted her teeth and knelt in front of Han's senator. She placed her right hand on her chest and said, I, Qin Jun, am willing to submit and offer absolute loyalty to a new master. I will become a faithful servant from now until eternity. After that, her forehead gleamed with a spirit stone. Needless to say, Hansen was in shock that Qin Jun, of all spirits, was willing to obey him. Hansen held her spirit stone in his hand. It shone brightly before becoming one with Qin Jun again. Qin Jun might have become Hansen's spirit, but the green sprouts were still on her. Open the bottle and let me in, Qin Jun shouted. How do I open it? Hansen asked. He had tried to open the cruel bottle before, but he was unable to. He thought it was very strange of her to give him a bottle, but at least now it was starting to make sense. Hansen touched the bottle to try to open it again, but this time, it opened immediately. Hansen realized he could only use it once a contract with the spirit that gave it had been signed. After the bottle was opened, Qin Jun transformed into a pellet of bright light. Then, she tucked herself inside it. As Hansen wondered why Qin Jun was doing this, another light appeared. This time, it was Water Fairy. Water Fairy's body was transparent, and you could see the sprouts manifesting inside her watery body. Her body bubbled and boiled, and if this was to continue, it'd only be a matter of time before she evaporated out of existence. She shouted, Help! Then she raced into the bottle alongside Qin Jun Hans and peered at Qin Jun and the Water Fairy inside the bottle, side by side, and noticed now that the sprouts had stopped growing on and within them. They were all gone. Hansen was delighted. Learning this treasure he had been given could negate the dark powers of the sky tree. Hansen, help? Hansen heard someone call out his name. He turned to see a number of vines crawling through the air like a web net. A second later, they were cut down to the ground. A mound of bones had given them a shave, and when Hansen's eyes came to focus, he saw Dry Bone King doing battle. Hansen flew over towards him, bottle in hand. As he pointed it at Dry Bone King, he asked, can you come inside? Drybone King spared no time in diving into the purifying comfort of the cruel bottle. Then, looking up, Hansen saw a nine-headed creature soar through the sky, screeching in pain. It was headed straight for him. But before Hansen could do anything for it, the heads began to separate from its body as vines ravaged the poor beast. Its life force was all going to the tree. When the body hit the ground, roots sprang out of the earth and dragged it underground. Hansen felt it was a great shame and waste. Turning around again, though, Hansen saw Ghost Eye becoming consumed by the hungry, lecherous vines. He was going to pull out his phoenix sword and do what he could to help. But before Hansen could do anything, Ghost Eye saw the bottle and dived right into it. I'm here to get easy kills. Why am I inadvertently saving these things? Hansen thought, but then he noticed something. It didn't seem like anything could exit the bottle without his explicit permission. The sound of an explosion rang through the forest. A rock giant was headed Hansen's way, covered in vines like angry moss. The sturdy golem was able to defy their attempts to tear it apart, though. And as expected, before the vines could do what they wished to, the rock giant jumped inside the cruel bottle. Chapter 1187 Sky King is Born Hansen was made up, and he thought to himself, Hmm, perhaps this is not all bad. Give me a few more, and I'll have myself a personal army. In the sky, the hellbird raged with great curtains of fire that smoked the skies and turned them black. Try as it might, it was unable to incinerate the vines that sought to ravage its fiery body. The green vines had put a strain on it and quelled the ferocity of its flames. The wretched, lecherous vines did not fear anything. The vines lashed the bird whose flesh they were born from, and they swayed like manic green fire licks of their own. Eventually, they proved too much, and they tore the bird apart. The bird had hoped to reach Han Sin and his bottle, and it had been rapidly descending as all this unfolded. Unfortunately, it was too late. The only thing to reach the ground was a rain of fleshy chunks and blood-stained feathers. It was another meal for the sky tree. Han Sin saw a giant flower get torn apart at the entrance to the sky tree. The other super creatures had all been too late for Han Sin to save, and they all ended up as food for the sky tree. Where is baby ghost? Han Sin asked as he searched amidst the ruin thinking of all the questions he still wanted to ask. The walnut forest was a vile hell's cape now, painted dark with the blood of spirits and creatures. Hansen asked Ching Jun, who was in the cruel bottle, where is baby ghost? 
Why did he not exit alongside you? We got separated. He was supposed to be here, Ching Jun said. Hansen asked the water fairy if she had seen him, but she said she had not seen him, either. Hansen thought this was boding poorly for Baby Ghost. His failure to escape didn't make sense, though. Hansen had informed him about the true nature of the conspiracy surrounding the operations of a mortal shelter, so he should have been among the first to get out. Hansen could no longer find the entrance to the sky tree, as the original tree hole was now filled up. There was no other way inside. But then, a scream sounded in the sky. Looking up, Hansen saw a gold peacock descending from atop the tree. A person was on top of the peacock, a figure with gold-colored hair adorned with a crown. The man's simple aura was one of the men's power, and Hansen felt it was comparable to Xiong In. Is that Sky King? The man was incredibly handsome. His beauty and strength transcended that which seemed achievable by humans, and one could have easily mistaken him for a god of sorts. That's him, Dragon King said. The gold peacock landed near Hans Senator. The man's eyes gleamed with the color of gold, but they seemed empty and devoid of emotion. Leave them, and I'll grant you a swift and merciful death. Sky King said. His eyes were callous pits of false holiness, and they saw through Han Sen as if it was a strain to even acknowledge his existence. Of course, a greedy person such as Han Sen was not willing to hand over his goodies, even if it meant he'd get away scot-free. Now was the perfect time to run, he believed. But still, not knowing the fate of Baby Ghost pained him. Ultimately, he ended up thinking the spirit might have just remained inside the Sky Tree to die. Han Sen thought about fighting Sky King. But now that the sky tree had been revived and his power might have been restored, it wasn't worth trying. He couldn't be sure he had what it took to deal with a foe such as that. Plus, if Hansen was truly able to defeat Sky King, he'd just respawn back in the sky tree. Hansen would have to destroy the tree itself to ensure he had dealt with Sky King for good. Hansen's phoenix sword had only been able to deal a minor scratch on the tree's bark. And that was before, when it was supposedly dead. He wagered he'd probably be unable to do anything to it now, in its current state. Earlier, when the bark of the tree fell off, it was replaced with new layers of bark. This bark was like burning, red-hot steel. It looked like a frightening monument, fresh from the forges of hell. It was an unsettling sight, for sure. Sky King wasn't going to let Hansen run off with so much of the tree's food, though. The gold peacock inflated itself like a balloon, and it became so bloated it blocked half of the sky. The gold peacock inhaled air in front of Hansen, whipping up a frenzied suction. It sought to consume Hansen and the bottle. Hansen gritted his teeth and summoned disloyal knight. Then he activated Super King Spirit Mode. He summoned a coin in his hand and then fired a multitude of them at the peacock. Although they were only coins, super creatures never seemed to have what was necessary to overcome Super King Spirit Mode. Hansen always prevailed in that form. The peacock, seeing the coins coming towards it, Stop sucking. With its mouth, it chomped a number of the coins to break them and their power. Disloyal Knight used its halo to dye the peacock and Sky King, a delightfully unholy, tarnished bronze color. Then, as it very much liked to do, it moved toward the creature and let loose a flurry of punches. The peacock's beak struck one of its fists, knocking Disloyal Knight back with a mark across its gauntlet. But this was good as Hansen took advantage of this opportunity to leap onto the peacock's back and dash before Sky King. Hansen's mighty fist, draped in a shroud of purified power, was thrown towards Sky King. Sky King watched Hansen approach, and the exact moment the fist was set to collide with his face, he moved. Hansen saw Sky King's arm, which was clad in gold armor, move. Then, he felt a sickly power meet with his chest. It felt as if he had gotten hit by a train. When Hansen hit the ground, he formed a fifth-timeter deep hole. Blurk. Hansen coughed blood from his mouth, and he thought to himself, Dragon King, I thought you said Sky King needs the Sky Tree to achieve the power of an emperor. Why is he this strong already? He must already be an emperor, one who has opened ten gene locks. He must be as powerful as Xiong Yin. Chapter 1188 Angel's Kiss How could this asterisk shoal become an emperor? Ten gene locks open? No way. The Sky Tree hasn't even fully recovered yet, Dragon King said. Ping. Sky King leaped down, his stomp creating a deep hole in the ground. You're the asterisk shoal right now. Ugh. Why did I ever trust you? Hansen used his phoenix techniques to dodge Sky King, who was going to try to stomp on him next. 
He was going to attempt another escape, but suddenly many golden palaces began to fall from the sky. And as they clobbered the area all around, in great ruin and catastrophe, Hansen felt as if he had stumbled into a post-apocalyptic landscape left to the faint whispers of dust and echoes. Whoa, he is an emperor. This is his sky palace technique. It's fueled by a space element. Unless we kill him, we're trapped. Dragon King cried aloud. Hansen's phoenix techniques were incredibly quick, and he bobbed and weaved between the tumbling palaces that fell to break the landscape with great speed. But it seemed as if there was no end to them, and no matter how far he went, it felt as they were being drawn to him. Is there any way for us to stop it? Hansen knew there was no point in being angry with Dragon King now. They were both in a dire situation, and cooperation would yield the best results. Hansen looked behind him and saw Sky King fast approaching. Each of his footsteps was painting the ground gold as he went. Sky King spared no time in throwing a punch towards Han Sr. Hansen fell back, trying to dodge the strike, but he felt as if his speed was slower than it ought to have been. He discovered it wasn't that his speed had slowed down, it was the dimension itself that had been stretched for him. The distances were stretched to become ten times longer, so Hansen was not evading any slower, he was just having to travel further. Sky King's punch might have looked very slow, but he could transcend the warping of the dimension and make it seem incredibly quick. With this play on space, Hansen was unable to dodge the strike. He had no choice but to try and meet Sky King's fist with his own. Hansen's fingers cracked in the collision, and it felt as if they were on the precipice of breaking. The power of the fist he went up against hurled him backwards. Ever since obtaining Super King Spirit Mode, things had never been so dire for Han. Senator rarely was he placed in a situation so dangerous that he could not escape. Boom. Hansen went flying back, crashing into the sturdy walls of a golden palace. The building began to collapse, and Hansen shook his head, slinging blood over the remaining walls. Before he could get up, though, Sky King was already upon him. He was primed, ready to deliver another cruel punch. What are you doing? Run! Dragon King exclaimed. But Hansen's perception of reality had been warped, as the dimension he inhabited was altered. He was unable to dodge. But suddenly, a holy beacon of light burst forth from Hansen's forehead. A figure appeared, wielding a transparent greatsword. It was a woman, with blonde wavy hair and white wings. Immediately, she went to strike Sky King. Dong! Sky King's fist had met its match. The power was negated, but the strength still managed to knock Little Angel away. She crashed into Han Sen, sending them both flying backwards even further. Run! Dragon King called out. Shut up! Hansen silenced the dragon blood ring, feeling like an idiot for having trusted Dragon King so much. Little Angel had the strength of a super king spirit, but she was not as strong as an emperor. Seeing Sky King approach, Hansen kicked up a coy fall to stop him. Owing to its suppressive abilities, they were both able to escape and recompose themselves. But the coins, as they landed on Sky King, didn't actually seem to do much. They merely dropped on him like actual raindrops, doing little to slow him down. Hansen had figured this might be the case, but he did not have the time to build up a saving money hit. Sky King was able to command the very dimension they inhabited and bend it to his will. If Hansen's Super King spirit had opened 10 gene locks, he might have been able to fight him, but alas, that was not the case. Hansen and Little Angel waged war against their foe, each letting out a flurry of punches and sword strikes. As valiant as it sounded, the reality of their battle was not half as grand. Sky King was able to use one hand to block each of their attacks, and he was able to do so with no trouble or strain. Disloyal Knight, in the meantime, was still engaged with the Golden Peacock. His armor had been severely damaged by this point and he was bleeding continuously. Pang. Hansen felt as if he ought to have been able to block the next punch to come his way, but again, the dimension was given a shake. The punch effortlessly landed upon his chest again. Hansen was sent flying. Not only did he break a number of palaces, but he also broke a few ribs. Little Angel could not dodge the punch she was delivered, either. That sent her flying backwards, too. Hansen went to catch Little Angel, and as he did, he thought about escaping by using his night cloak. After moving forward to catch Little Angel, she paused in his arms. Then, she turned around and kissed Hansen upon the lips. I know you love me, but let's save this for a more appropriate time. Hansen tried to mask his surprise. But the moment they kissed, 
Little Angel became a figure that was formed entirely of white light. Then, she entered Hansen's body and became one with him. Hansen felt rejuvenated, as if he had been gifted a vast amount of power, the likes of which he never thought he'd be able to wield. His head was dressed with a gold halo ring, while his back sprouted white angel wings. Then, a new weapon spawned in his hand, the transparent greatsword. Roar. Hansen roared to the skies, as a new power surged through his being. It combined with his cells to make changes to his body. Chapter 1189, Killing Sky King. Katcha. Hansen felt as if his body had been freed from the clutches of chains he never knew existed. The holy light enveloped Hansen's entire body, wings, and greatsword. He felt as if he was submerged beneath water, floating free. Sky King warped the dimension again and threw a punch with the illusion of near teleportation levels of speed. Seeing another punch had his way, Hansen readied his greatsword. But even though the fist was only a meter away, it felt like it was miles away. In the next second, he was swinging his greatsword as if it was weightless. It cut through the twisted, perverse dimension and struck Sky King's wrecking fist. It was too late for Sky King to pull back, as half of his fist was lopped off. Sky King bled profusely from his fist, which made him reel back aghast. He couldn't believe what had just happened, and truth be told, neither could Han Sr. But Han Sin was happy at the sudden turning of the tides. Little Angel had helped Han Sin open his tenth gene lock for Super King Spirit. Now, Han Sin could not be suppressed by the warping of dimensions. Han Sin wasn't yet sure about the extent of his power with ten gene locks open. He didn't exactly have the opportunity to thoroughly test it, due to the current circumstances. Neither did he know if this was a permanent opening of a gene lock, and if it would remain open if Little Angel exited his body. Regardless, Hansen now had what it took to fight back. Victory did not seem impossible now, and so he had to focus on ending the current threat. Hansen flapped his wings. In a flash of holy light, he teleported directly before Sky King. Sky King frowned and raised a golden palace in response. It was a few hundred meters away to begin with, but now it had blinked forth to separate the two. But Hansen was able to flap his wings again, and with the great sword, he sliced through the new distortion of the dimension. Then, Hansen cut through the palace. Sky King did not expect his Sky Palace to prove ineffective in protecting him from Han Senator. He had not expected the tables to turn so quickly and turn so dramatically, and Sky King now wanted to flee and return to the safety and comfort of his tree. Sky King was incredibly fast and agile, and with his abilities of dimension distortion, he was able to manipulate his movement so that one step could account for a thousand meters. But Hansen flapped his wings again. Immediately, he was able to catch up with Sky King so he could swing his sword and strike him down. Sky King frowned, and he wasn't going to make things that easy. He turned, holding up a wooden spear that looked like the sky tree. Dong! The transparent great sword struck the spear and left a deep cleft in it. Hansen was even happier now. He drew the phoenix sword in one hand while Transparent Greatsword remained in the other. Then, he unleashed a barrage of strikes against Sky King. Sky King was able to keep his spear raised in an attempt to block the attacks, but the dual-wielding barrage proved too much. The shockwaves generated by Han Sen's flurry of attacks soon began to collapse and devastate the golden palaces that littered the ruined landscape. Dong! Sky King's spear was no longer able to withstand the attacks, and it eventually broke in two. Hansen flew around behind Sky King and cut his face. Sky King's desperate bid to flee now escalated. With a wretched face of disgust, he turned towards the tree and took off. But Hansen was no longer afraid of anything, now that he was imbued with the holy light. With the glowing halo, too, he flapped his wings and followed Sky King wherever he went. Sky King bled, and the skies were dyed red, as if in response. Sky King's blood began to cascade like rainfall. It shocked Sky King, and his bleeding face robbed him of any intention he had to fight back. All he wanted to do now was return to his tree and cower within. Hansen did not relent in his chase, and he smirked at seeing how much Sky King's behavior had changed. All his cockiness had vanished. He got in another strike, and this time, Hansen managed to not only cut Sky King's crown in two, but also give him a less than fashionable haircut. The gold armor Sky King wore was all broken and it had turned the color of rusted, aged steel. His wounds leaked blood like broken faucets. Sky King flew inside the tree and closed himself inside. 
Hanston was determined not to allow this to stop him, though. He struck the tree once, creating a dozen-meter-long mark across the surface of the tree. Unfortunately, it didn't do much. The tree seemed able to heal itself, too. So Hansen began striking the tree fiercely. He hoped he could keep up the DPS to outpace the healing. And all the while, Sky King was inside, cowering in fear over his nemesis. As Hansen excitedly fought against the bark of the tree, it soon revealed itself to be a futile endeavor. But Hansen suddenly smiled in the remembrance of something. He turned around and went after the golden peacock. The golden peacock wasn't expecting Hansen back, and it really wasn't expecting his newfound strength. With its beak, it attempted to block Hansen's greatsword. Ketcha. The gold peacock was no match, and it was promptly cut in half. Super creature Sky Peacock killed. Beast soul gained. The flesh of this creature is inedible, but you may harvest its life geno essence. Consume its life geno essence to gain 0 to 10 super geno points randomly. Hansen grabbed the yellow life geno essence from its body and put Disloyal Knight back inside the Sea of Soul. Then, he returned to the underground shelter. Hansen's Super King Spirit Mode could last one hour, but after combining with Little Angel, he felt drained of all energy within the space of a few minutes. As Hansen flew back home, Little Angel departed and returned to the Sea of Soul looking equally tired and drained of energy. Hansen was feeling worse than usual. He was in very poor condition, and he had to make use of his Blood Demon Dragon Wings to return home. He couldn't even fly home by himself. He was so weak. Chapter 1190 Azura Betrayal While Hansen was flying back, someone called out his name. When he turned around to take a look, he saw an eight-year-old child squirming and writhing around on the ground as if in pain. Baby ghost? Hansen was surprised to see him there. He was glad he was alive and had not been killed. He didn't have any green sproutlings popping up all over him, but there was definitely something wrong with him. He used to have the face of a child, but now he was a child completely. The head was still frighteningly large, however. His life force was weak, almost as weak as a newly spawned golden growler. What happened to you? Hansen asked. Talk later. For now, we should get moving. Maybe Ghost clearly did not know Sky King had returned to the tree. Hansen grabbed Baby Ghost and returned to the underground shelter with him. Then, he ordered Moment Queen to move the shelter. Little Angel and Hansen were weak, and in their current state, they no longer had the ability to combine together and fight Sky King. As such, they decided the best course of action was to leave. Hansen spoke to Baby Ghost and asked, I thought you went looking for Sky King after I told you the truth of matters. What happened to you? Baby Ghost answered, I told Xing Jun, and we only went and spoke to the others. We didn't consult Sky King, but we were going to. But before the opportunity arose, the tree began to revive. Okay. And what happened to you? Hansen asked. Maybe Ghost explained, fortunately for me, I had Ghost Baby to escape. I abandoned my vessel and sacrificed a portion of my spirit stone to survive. I say fortunately loosely, as now I'm only a shadow of what I once was. My progress has been wiped. I don't even have a single gene lock open. Just being alive is enough, Baby Ghost. Even if you're weak, being alive is more than worth the sacrifice. Hansen smiled softly to comfort him. Ching Jun was in even worse condition, though. Those that had escaped into the cruel bottle were all alive, but they were stuck inside the bottle and unable to exit. If they left the confines of the bottle, the sky tree would finish the job and absorb them. Being unable to get rid of the vines meant they'd possibly be stuck inside the bottle forever. The cruel bottle was like a room that operated independently to everything else, but it had to be sealed and had to remain sealed. It could not be opened, lest the Sky Tree finish what it had already started. Aside from destroying the Sky Tree, Hansen had no clue how he might proceed. There didn't seem to be any other way Hansen could remove the vines. The creatures and spirits had each consumed too much life water, too, so the core of a Sky Fruit would be largely ineffective. In the meantime, though, Hansen decided to return to the Alliance. Little Angel and Hansen were both still too weak, and for the time being, they wouldn't even have the strength to tackle a super creature. Hansen rested there for two days, and after that, he started refining the life geno essence of the sky peacock. Life geno essence absorbed, super geno points plus one. Hansen was delighted, hearing the announcement chime more than once. In total, the life geno essence provided him four points in total. 
Super creatures in the third god's sanctuary were different. Some could give eight to nine super geno points, whereas others could only give three to four. Hansen guessed it had something to do with the generation of a super creature, but he hadn't had much time to test and prove such theories. Sky Peacock was a Mount Beast soul, and Hansen considered it to be fairly useless. When Hansen's condition and health improved, he didn't jump back to start hunting super creatures again. He realized he still needed a lot more strength to fight an emperor, though he had to be careful where he next ventured. If he combined powers with Little Angel, the cooldown period was extreme. The boost didn't last very long, either, so he knew he couldn't rely on that trick very often. It had to be used as a last resort. What Hansen wanted to do most right now was research the vines and find a way in which he might remove them without destroying the sky tree. If he saved all the creatures and spirits inside, they'd all owe him one, and they might end up following him. If that was true, he'd more than have what it took to take down a king-class shelter. Dragon King gave Hansen a number of ideas, but Hansen didn't dwell on many of them. He didn't think he should trust Dragon King as much, anymore. That being said, Hansen understood Dragon King never wanted to bring harm to him. Dragon King had made a simple blunder, and the results of his time in a mortal shelter did not come about through some evil machination or scheme the spirit had hatched, as Moment Queen might do. After all, if something bad happened to Hansen and he was killed, that would be game over for Dragon King, too. So, more than anything, Hansen had just called Dragon King's overall intelligence into question. It boggled Hansen's mind how someone so dumb might have once been an emperor. Please have faith in me. I have a plan. This could really work. Dragon King felt sorry for what had happened and desperately wanted to get back into Hansen's good books. Dragon King was relying on Hansen to find him a vessel, after all. The Azura Sutra can get rid of those vines, he said, but Hansen struggled to believe it. If you practice the Azura Sutra, you can fix them. Back then, Dragon King realized he had said something he should not have mentioned. Back then what? Hansen asked. Dragon King knew, if he didn't play his cards right and only do good for Hansen, he'd be trapped in the ring for all eternity. Azura was one of the generals who beat Sky King. His Azura Sutra is bad for the tree, but you would need to find a spirit of that bloodline to perform it, Dragon King said. Didn't you say Sky King was an emperor? And ancient devil emperor beat Sky King himself? So Azura was just a general, but he was able to defeat Sky King, too? Hansen thought there were inconsistencies in the spirit's tales, and he wasn't sure whether or not he should give Dragon King the benefit of the doubt. But Dragon King then explained, folk of the Azura bloodline can defeat Sky King. Besides, he betrayed Mr. Ancient Devil. You remember Devil's Realm and Ancient Devil. Shelter, don't you? That was the consequence of his betrayal. 